Yesterday, all the major 3D applications updated their software to a newer version, including Blender, Cinema 4D, Maya, and 3ds Max. Today, we are doing what is natural and comparing all their new updates to one another and see which one did the best. We're going to start with Blender, which focused mainly on hair, VDBs, and the viewport. One thing to note about Blender releases is that uh, since they have daily builds, where almost every new feature that is going to come out in the official release is tested out throughout the year before the major release, most of these updates or new features don't feel like new features since we have seen them already and uh, played with them a lot. So most of the features you're going to see in Blender are, all, are already familiar features and you may not really recognize them as new features. So it might be a bit less exciting as the other demos from the other applications. So with that, let's just jump in into Cinema 4D. Some of the major features coming to Cinema 4D include a new commander, which gives you quick access to Cinema 4D commands, objects, tags, presets, and capsules. They have also added a new modeling feature called Thicken. This is the equivalent to the Solidify modifier in Blender, which we have had for years and this allows you to procedurally add thickness to any mesh. You can control the thickness based on vertex map or polygon selection and you can use the advanced mode to resolve intersections and force perpendicular boundaries and reserve corners. Also saw additional improvements to modeling like the new, the new symmetry object that lets you do procedural linear and radial symmetry. Improvements to the node editor include an improved UI, readability, and usability when working with thin nodes and redshift materials. You have now a pop-up asset browser and an attributes panel within the node editor. You can extend color coding for data types, port shapes to denote streams, loops, and arrays. Now your pyro simulations can be rendered within the viewport and also accept scene lights uh, that include spot, directional, and point lights. Your pyro simulations can also support vertex colors, meaning that your volume objects can take up the vertex color of your meshes. There's also a new feature that allows vertex map for balloon effect, making it easy for you to inflate parts of a mesh and leave the other part deflated. You can read more about these updates in the description. This 2024 3ds Max update focuses on two major things. The boolean modifier that has been reworked so that you can use it without any care. You can use a lot of different meshes to carve out any shape you want which greatly improves hard surface modeling. This new boolean modifier outputs a final mesh that smoothens out the results making it seem like there are no actual booleans used. It is a perfect way to model high detailed hard surfaces while producing clean geometry output. Another notable update is the new array modifier that allows you to procedurally distribute meshes in a radial or linear fashion. And then Maya 2024 update introduced Look Dev X, which is an agnostic material editor that enables standardized material workflows. It allows you to share materials freely and accurately throughout a pipeline and includes a new modern node-based environment for authoring a variety of materials like USD Shared, Material X, and Arnold. There's also improvement in modeling, especially for retopologizing, including feature preservation, which preserves features like hard edges and user-defined edge components. Uh, this feature allows you to maintain specific areas of detail on input mesh and control or guide the resulting edge flow of a retopologized output mesh. There's also improvements in Boolean toolset, which gives modelers more control when adding and editing new, new input objects in the Boolean stack. I really love this update schedule where everyone just updates their software and releases the demos at the same time so that we can do fun comparisons like this. Also allows us to see the strength of each application and weaknesses that might be resolved in different updates. So that's it. Thank you for watching. All links are going to be in the description.